the killer, the cult leader. It's in your eyes. No! You've got the wrong man! It's Scratch! There's no time to lose! You're going nowhere! My agent had come here before me on the trail of a murder cult. He'd gone missing, presumed dead. The cult was leaving me clues to follow, connecting the dots from one murder to the next, inviting me to draw an obscene picture on the city map. Caldera Street Station. The name made me think of the exit wound of a bullet. The blood trail was the red carpet to this gruesome gala. Turns out the cultists weren't the only ones using the tunnels. Hidden graffiti signs marked secret routes. I kept hearing whispers around burn barrels of an underground society of mystic outsiders with hidden knowledge. <laughs> Typical New York. The Fed had witnessed something here that made him run scared. Whether the summoning ritual had been a bona fide supernatural event or the mass psychosis of stark raving lunatics, it didn't change the facts. Stepping to the murder site, I'd felt it hanging in the air. A meaning, the violent emotion of the act. Like a cloud of wrath, the dead eyes of the victim staring at something you couldn't see, and yet making you aware of it. The cult was messing with things no one should mess with. Something had soaked into this place on a molecular level, overlapping with your meaningless existence. A regression to something you had managed to forget. Marking you. Taking you for a ride. Making you crazier. The torchbearers painted the tree there. The tree of knowledge? The tree of life with its roots reaching down to hell? It could have been a Christmas tree for all the good it did him. The writer. Maybe he was a victim. The cult using his words. Or maybe he was the monster behind it all. Either way, Alice Wake, his ex, she knew things. It was there in her art for all to see. A cry for help. The darkness she'd witnessed. And that put her in danger. Whispers from the police radio kept me awake at night. The word through the ether. A murder in the backdrop of a play featuring a murder cult. <laughs> How meta can you get? He said, looking knowingly at the camera. I could sense the cult of the word in this, and their leader, Mr. Scratch. Rumored to be Alan Wake, the writer who'd gone missing years before. They would surface from the dark with their depraved acts of violence and fade back into the night, leaving behind bloody crime scenes and clues heavy with obscure meanings that led nowhere. Had I chosen to pursue the cult, or had they chosen me for some unknowable purpose? To be a demon, to sort the clues based on my interpretation, to change that which I observed. Mr. Scratch is the devil. He was born to play the role. According to the director, the actor hadn't mingled with the rest of the cast. He had only come out for the play, and always in character. Mr. Scratch, if that's who the actor playing the devil was, had stayed in the hotel. Asking around at reception got me a room number. Hmm. 666. He had requested that room, specifically. The devil had a sense of humor. Or he really didn't. It was funny either way. 
Okay, let's talk about the murder victim. The lady who was killed in the climax of the play. She was staying in room 108, where the murder happened. It was all a play. Shadows on the wall of a cave. An echo of the true events that happened somewhere else. Was I there to watch the shadows, or was I a shadow too? In a performance set up for someone else. Inside this messy maze of blood trails I was chasing the cult through, I ran into the filmmaker, Thomas Zane, an esoteric bohemian with a hard-on for acts of cruelty performed in the name of occult nonsense. A director wants to control every aspect of the world in their films. Is a cult leader any different? Was Zane just another alias for Scratch? There was a rumor that Wake and Zane had been working on something together. I was gonna get the truth out of Zane with whatever means necessary. The urban legends circling Thomas Zane were a bottomless rabbit hole. I'd done some digging. To film freaks, he was a mythic auteur in the art house cinema, a rising star coming to America from Finland. But he only created one film, Tom the Poet, before he went missing, mirroring the vanishing of the main character in the movie, played by himself. The biggest mystery was around his lost film, an early work made in Finland, Nightless Night, rumored to have mystic properties. Some claimed it was a snuff film, that the ritual murder in the film was an actual murder. There were no known surviving copies, but the cult chased it as if it were their unholy grail, just like Wake's books were. Arriving at the cinema, I felt a monumental, terrifying revelation trembling before me, ready to open its jaws and swallow me whole. How did you do it? How did you get me into that film clip without my remembering it? I'm not going anywhere before I get some answers! How was I in that movie? How, why does all this feel so familiar? What? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? Everything out of your mouth is a damn lie. The only place any of this makes any sense is in your psychotic brain. There wasn't enough alcohol in this city to drown the memories of this nightmare. But I'd damn well try. This case would never be closed. I had more questions now than at the start. The irony of being trapped in a postmodern detective story. <laughs> I felt watched. The eyes of some unseen audience on me. I wanted to turn to the hidden camera and tell them to fuck off. But I didn't know where to look to break the fourth wall. There would always be another case for Casey. A million stories in this dark city. I felt like I'd been on this case looking for the cult of the word for a lifetime or more. The only case I'd ever been on. The night opened up to welcome me. I walked into her arms. Roll credits. The rain tried to wash away the sins of this city. <laughs> but some sins, the evidence of the crimes committed, could never be erased. Not by the rain, or any amount of therapy from Dr. Jack Daniels. It remained bruises under my skin, like tattoos. Bruises in my soul. Scar tissue on my heart. The rain never stopped falling. And I never stopped drinking. The city was a monster poised to tear into you the second you let your guard down. You thought you had it tamed. That you knew what the hell you were doing. Your last mistake. Unless you got lucky. And you didn't deserve to get lucky. 
You blinked at the wrong time, let your mind wander, and the fire escape that was meant to be your getaway route was gone, it was never there at all. You'd gotten turned around somewhere along the way. The city was coming to finish you off, and there was nowhere left to run. This city will suck you dry if you stay here for too long. You'll end up a lost soul, haunting the streets and alleys. A faded out shadow, glimpsed by some other poor bastard on his way toward the same fate. Your broken dreams become a broken mirror, and the twisted reflection staring back at you with all the pent-up anger, regret, guilt, and shame was the monster you could never get away from. You dream of calling it quits, hmm? Making a clean break, retiring, escaping, leaving all this sordid misery and terror behind. Getting in a car and driving till you see the sunrise. Somewhere where the sun still rises. Settling down, buying a house, fixing it up, building a life, finding someone. It's a fool's dream. It would all go bad. And having let hope in, it would be unbearably worse than this. You can take the man out of the city, but you can never take the city out of the man. They say God made us in his image. <laughs> Just like us, he is an uncaring, cruel son of a bitch. Having made it in heaven, he doesn't want us there, dirtying up all that nice white upholstery. And he doesn't want to reach down to help us. He gets his kicks just binge-watching us struggling, hurting, killing, dying, screwing it up again and again, lazily stirring it up when things threaten to get too placid. This city is only here to satisfy his sick, voyeuristic pleasure. Something kept me going. A broken man, no hope, no prospects, no love. Too stubborn to die, like a cockroach with a misguided sense of honor and justice in a city where there can never be justice. I refuse to quit out of spite, a self-inflicted punishment for failures that could never be redeemed, refuse to stay lying down after a beating, crawling back to my feet only to get in line for another one. A perpetual masochistic motion machine. Chasing the murder cult made me feel like I was caught in a loop. Every time I thought I was getting closer, things shifted around, and I realized I was further away than ever before. Instead of answers, I only got more questions. The name of the cult and the masks they wore kept changing. The deeper into the dark depths I got, peeling off the layers of this case, like the ocean zones from twilight to midnight to abyssal to the deepest trenches, the closer I felt to going mad. Maybe in some other reality, a sadistic, godlike creator kept writing cases for me just to keep selling my suffering to violence-hungry masses for profit. Alan Wake. Hm. My name comes up, your books come up, you come up. I've read them. There are echoes of my life in there that makes me feel like someone's been watching me. What happened to Alan Wake? The unanswered mystery. Never expected to find you alive. I think you like using people, Wake. Taking their lives and twisting them into your stories. And when someone gets hurt, it's kick-ass material for the next one. This is not your playground, and I'm not your fucking creation. Stop blaming yourself, Anderson. A knife in the arm is just part of the job. 
If you're gonna keep fussing, you can get the hell out. <laughs> but, uh, leave the whiskey. Anderson, uh, look, after Miranda left, it was, uh, well, I was in a bad place. You dragging me to those dinners at your house with your family, uh, it really, uh, meant a lot. Thank you. Ah, oh, really, Anderson? The salt shaker? We've come to this? You loosened the top while I was getting the napkins? Ha, ha, ha. Didn't you? Ah, oh, it's in my pockets. It's, it's in my shoes. Stop, stop laughing. Cheating on a science fair? That's almost a crime, Anderson. It's all about control. Deciding what happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. Hmm. I didn't know trees got that big. Gives me the creeps. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. We can't assume the person writing these pages isn't playing us. Good to see you still in one piece, Anderson. Forest can be a dangerous place. Looks to me like the cult of the tree is performing rituals to create monsters. Playing a sick game with us. I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. Cases aren't good or bad, Anderson. They're just cases. But no happy ending. I'm getting flashbacks. Remember Ohio? Hmm. Something about morgues. They always cheer me up. Yeah, Agent Casey here. Yeah. We need backup. The Bright Falls case. Whoever you can spare. You said it, Anderson. It's a shit show. So what's the plan? A murder cult. Fuck. So essentially, we're standing in the gaping maw of hell. Think we'll actually find Nightingale at the lake? That seems pretty complicated to me. What was this guy doing skinny dipping at this time of year? Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff this gruesome. The Grand Master, my ass! You're a clown in a mask! Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing, I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. A tripod for a camera? To record a, a snuff film? Wake was telling the truth about the cult being after him. The thing, the dark presence, it's real too. I saw it, a fucked up monster cloud. Wake tried to warn me, it knocked me out. FBC found me in the woods later. When that insane monster cloud came at me in the woods, I saw a face inside it, Wake's. I think he was always a monster, always scratch. He almost won me over. I should have trusted my gut. Had a bad feeling about him when we found him at the lake. No, 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 Wake or Scratch, whoever that was, said the story could be used to attack us. We all need to question what's real. With that said, how do we know the story isn't giving you false hope? Wait, Saga. What do you, um... Logan is gone. She has been. For a long time. Uh, I remember you and David having problems. You needed a break. You and Logan moved to Watery and... 
And then, uh... Then, Logan... Well, that awful thing happened. After you came back to work, I thought you'd be the perfect partner for this case. If you were willing to return to the area. Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. And if Scratch is after you, then so is the cult. We don't know who we can trust here. Agent Anderson has her methods, Deputy. Her results speak for themselves. You will learn to trust it. I certainly have. And speak of the devil. I see you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it. I've watched you arrest plenty of monsters, Anderson. Uh, worth memorizing before we get swallowed up by the trees. No dice, pal. This is an FBI investigation, and I don't see a badge on that flannel. Yeah, the PI from your books has the same name as me. Great. Moving on. I have a light. And a gun. You can relax, Wake. No, 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 that's not how this works. You're a civilian, and we don't do ride-alongs. Take your time. But you should know these woods aren't the safest. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? We know about the pages, Wake. We'll keep an eye out for them. It's a bit of a hike to the car, Wake. Get your bearings, then we'll head out. Creepy bunch, in the habit of wearing deer masks, performing murder rituals, victims turning into monsters possessed by darkness, possibly inspired by a horror story written by a certain author. Hmm? Ring any bells? The trees, Anderson. He hid the bodies in the forest. As for the power problem, here. I found a fuse on those poor bastards there. Ah, don't give me that worried look, Anderson. It's just a, it's a flesh wound. <laughs> Gave me a chance to have a, a nice chat about ex-wives with uh, Kieran. Uh, Agent Estevez, I mean. <sighs> hmm. The killers are usually the ones performing the ritual, not the detective. Acting out their sick fantasy. They may be trying to get you involved, forcing you into their twisted world. Let me guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. It looked right from where we were standing. Nothing's what it seems in this case. Too many stories contradicting each other. Too many versions of the truth. I'm not filling out the paperwork for this one. I wouldn't know where to start. Fucking nature. Gives me a headache. There's too much sky. The FBC is an obscure branch. Only shows up for... unusual cases. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Maybe the sheriff knew more than he was letting on. I'll buy the coffee, Anderson. Partners to the end. This case is one for the books. I was dead tired. I just wanted it to be over. It was all my fault. I'd had this dark place in my head for so long. Sometimes I forget the pain was there. Like it was the way you were supposed to feel. I was not in a dark place. I was the dark place. The source of it all. The vessel. Me and the writer. We were the same. This place kept pushing me under. Getting into my head poisoning me with darkness. I had to find a way to escape before it was too late. Too late again. <laughs>